Okay, so reasons I'm not really an anti-theist, okay? This is a, and, and just so you all know, for those of you who don't know, let me just show you this real quick. Let me show you this video, okay? This is a video that I did a little bit ago that if you haven't seen this video, you should probably go check it out, okay? Um, so, uh, here we go. So, this is my video called, I Grew Up in a Cult, Demon Mama's Spiritual Deconstruction, Inspired by Good Mythical Morning. If you haven't seen this, I highly recommend it. It's very long. It is a very personal deep dive into the cult that I grew up in. Um, I put a lot of work into this. This is probably one of my one of the works I'm most proud of for my entire channel. So please feel free to check it out. Leave it a like and comment. I'd love to see this video get a lot of life. Okay, the responses I've gotten to this video have been fantastic. Wait, or do we have an F? Oh, okay. Don't F me like that. Don't F me. You're scaring the shit out of me. All right. So, um, so yeah. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk about let's talk about this. So I came from a really, really tough religious background. And as makes sense, I did have a period of time where I consider myself an anti-theist, where a lot of my thought was focused on um, criticizing religion because I had just come out of a cult and all of this. Um, and I still have a lot of critiques. Um, but over time, I've, m I've realized that my critique of religion was not actually all that good. That religion as a concept um, is not really the root problem that I that I'm dealing with now a lot of religions do contain the thing that I was trying to critique um, But not all of them. Okay, and so over time I have refined my critique um, Oh, I don't want to tell exactly where I where I came from there, but uh, but it was uh, we're, we were very close I can tell you that much Let me explain this a little bit religion is a really complicated topic and there are so many different forms of religion in the world they are so diverse you can't even believe it we humans have believed all kinds of different things in all kinds of different way ways through all of history and i think it is um a bit it is a bit presumptuous to shut down the entire concept of beliefs spirituality or religion just because um a couple of religions are super 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 bad and super cringe um so the thing that I, over time, I've refined my critique to focus on dogmaticism, traditionalism, and hierarchical structures, okay? So those are the three things. I focus on dogmaticism, being, uh, being, uh, being strictly um, uh, adherent to a specific set of beliefs that, are, that must be followed on a moralistic basis, uh, lest your eternal soul perish. The other part of it um, that I've done uh, is this traditionalism. I think traditionalism, yeah, oh uh, yeah, put the fan back in the window, that's fine. Um, so traditionalism is uh, a big problem in my opinion. Just because something was done a certain way does not mean that it's better. And capital T traditionalism is really harmful because that is what makes us, like that is uh, the, the, the predominant belief system that motivates people keeping things like um like uh uh traditional gender roles uh misogyny in place this sort of traditionalism is a huge problem and i think traditions there are certain traditions that are great celebrating christmas is a, is a great tradition um that lots of people have fun with lots of holidays are traditions people in their households make small traditions and rituals that are super valuable and super super innocuous but traditionalism, the, the belief that because something was established before, that it must have been better, is a big problem. And then, of course, uh, you know, part three, which is the hierarchical structure. Um, so, uh, as you know, I am pretty critical of hierarchical structures in general. Um, but, rel but organized religions, the religions that most people spend their time critique, critiquing, have hierarchic have a hierarchic worldview built into their doctrine. So, um, and this is all over the place. If we take Christianity for an example, the sort of um, the uh, Christianity is the ultimate hierarchical religion. And I mean, arguably, Christianity has influenced the development of the world as we see it now through monarchy uh, into capitalism. 
um, you know, it, or into mercantilism, into capitalism, to where we are now. And this all comes from the idea of chosen people, the idea of intermediaries between you and God, whether it's a priesthood or a random pastor or a prophet that has a hierarchical position. They are above you. They tell you the will of God and they tell you what to believe. And I have big problems with this type of structure. I have big problems with any religion that um, that uh, uses spirituality, uses um, this this sort of mysticism to enforce a a hierarchy on everyone else. Um, and Calvinism is monstrous. Like Calvinism and its consequences have just been so bad for the human for the human race. Um, God, Calvinism is bad. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, the, the, there are a lot of belief systems that I think can be very valuable to people. Um, and the thing is, I think a lot of, like, anti-theist types believe themselves to be totally free of superstition or to believe themselves to be totally free of, of any sort of mysticism, but the reality is that we exist in a persistent state of making certain assumptions. We have, uh, there are a lot of things that simply cannot be, that cannot be proven and that cannot be known. For example, I don't know that we will ever, I don't think that we can ever have an answer to the question of free will. Do we have free will? Do we not have free will? I don't know. We make assumptions and we go on anyway. Every person on the planet more or less acts like the human soul exists. So whether or not the human soul does exist, we all kind of have to pretend that we are an agent that it, that inhabits our body uh, to a certain way or that is our body one way or another, depending on how you frame it. But regardless, that is a uh, assumption. And I think that I think that this idea that that, um, you know, all types of understanding the world should be boiled down to empiricism is flawed. Um, there are metaphorical ways to describe things that are more effective than an empirical description. Um, for example, uh, like this is like qualitative versus quantitative. Um, like, like, okay, I could describe this clove as a... Uh, a tobacco leaf cylinder uh, with, uh, you know, 80% clove, uh, you know, 10% uh, nutmeg, uh, you know, 20% uh, tobacco, and and that would explain this thing very well. You would be able to know what the technical specifications of the cigarette was. But I could also describe this as a... A, a human invention that has been honed over generations of humans, the idea of which has been iterated on and changed, that has flavor, that has a certain experience, that when you go out on your back porch during a thunderstorm and you overlook the city of Seattle and you're just taking a drag from this delicious spiced thing um, and you're just... It, it, it focuses your mind in a way that connects you with the world. And that's a different way. That is a non-empirical way of describing this exact same item that makes sense probably more to a lot of people as to why somebody would enjoy a, a clove cigarette. Do you understand? So I think that sometimes people want all belief forms to take empirical shapes. But the reality is, is that no person can contain all of the empirical knowledge to justify their beliefs. There are ultimately places where we make the call and we fall into belief and we fall into faith. And I don't think that those things are necessarily bad. And this is why I don't consider myself like an anti-theist or an anti-religion person anymore. What I look for is not whether someone has some potentially spiritual or mystical beliefs that aren't necessarily 100% verified in the empirical world. Instead, I want to look at whether this person is participating in a hegemonic uh, hierarchical structure, whether this person is, um, is insisting that the world remain the way that it always has been, and whether this person has some sort of absurdly manipulative doctrine that must be followed or else you are bad. Does that make sense? I hope that all makes sense.
Sorry, that was a that was a big brain download, but that's how I feel about it. And that's why I don't consider myself an anti-theist. And that's also why I don't really think that there's like a big value in like debunking religion all the time. Also, there are a fuckload of religious organizations that are even um that are even flawed or attached to flawed belief systems that still nonetheless do good. So I don't think that we sh I don't think that lefties especially should be as willing to dismiss religion out of hand. I also don't think that, that means that you that religion is above reproach. Um, uh, I think that we have to. You cannot critique capitalism without critiquing the Catholic Church, for example. The Catholic Church influenced the formation of capitalism, like on a very serious level. So yeah, yeah, deism and pandeism. Um, there are Taoist. Okay, so like uh, something that that like I think is useful is like if you look into Taoism, in Taoism there are like literally countless Taoist sects. They branch off and and seek information and cultivation and enlightenment via all kinds of different things. And some of them are horrible. Some Taoist sects are super super snake like snake oil traditional medicine. Some Taoist sects are really really rigid and hierarchical, and others are not. But there's a massive amount of diversity. So I don't think you can just rule it out based on religion, right? Because there are religions that do good things and that provide value for the people involved. There are religions that teach not by force, that don't indoctrinate, but instead offer their philosophical interpretation of the world. And I think that's fine. So I think that we shouldn't, we shouldn't be too hasty to dismiss religion outright. We should be careful. So, yeah. Yeah. Above reproach is a very religious term. Well, yeah, but the term is not what we're talking about here. Catholicism is, is incredibly hierarchical, incredibly hegemonic. Yeah. And that's why I don't consider myself an anti-theist, and that's why I don't really care about spending a lot of time critiquing um, spirituality, because most people who are spiritual are very personal with their beliefs, and that's okay. We all are. All of us believe in things that have not been in empirically, um, empirically proven, and all of us are just as irrational in some of our beliefs as anyone else. There are just there are just certain uh, structures that can lead to very, very, very bad outcomes and conclusions. Aren't most religions traditionalist, hierarchical, and dogmatic? No. See, that's the thing. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck in Christian brain. See, a lot of people, especially uh, people who watch a lot of American streamers, in, they engage with a religion in the context of, of of hegemonic Christianity. But that is not even close to most of the religions in the world. I don't want to misinterpret your point, but are you saying that one can't describe things qualitatively if they are actively anti-theist or anti-spirituality? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, is that religions and spiritualities sometimes offer frameworks for understanding the world that are just different. They're not necessarily wrong. They're not necessarily incorrect. They just frame things differently. And a lot of life and a lot of our understanding is how we frame and understand things. Um, I am somebody who, uh, I mean, I grew up in an extreme religious environment. Um, and as a result, metaphor and storytelling are things that are very valuable to me in understanding facts and truths about the world more so than empirical data is usually helpful. Well, yes, Lava Monster, I would agree with you on that, though. But there's a different reason. Once again, that that the stuff like Noah's Ark and medical quackery are the products of of traditionalism. They are the products of dogma. You can't you can't. The reason why the story of Noah's Ark has has not been challenged by a lot of religious sects is because you can't because they say it's dogma. You can't criticize anything in the holy book. But that's the problem. See, the problem is the dogma, not necessarily the religious aspect. It's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not a, a, a flaw to um, to have a, a story about creation or a story about a moral story that maybe doesn't even happen. The problem is when you insist that it is uncritical, that it must be accepted as dogmatic. What are some religions that more often benefit society rather than harm it? Sikh Sikhism. Now, Sikhism does have some issues with traditionalism. There are some traditional gender roles that are problem problematic, but Sikhism is like super, super, overall super progressive and also incredibly charitable. In, in like anywhere you go in any major city, Sikh temples have a religious duty to provide food to the needy. You can go to a Sikh um, like 
prayer night and they will feed you no matter what. You do not have to become a part of their faith. You do not even have to stay for the sermon. If you show up, they will feed you. That is their job. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty incredible. There are a lot of native beliefs that are very, very beneficial that have, have, have led to uh, people finding spiritual meaning and emotional relief before uh, before the concept of, of like modern understanding of the mind was even a thing. And they did a good job at it because they weren't hegemonic. They weren't doctrinaire. They weren't obsessed with uh, dogma. Oh yeah, and also remember that Christian leftism is a real thing. Like it like it, especially in Latin America, like there are literally like bishops and and cardinals who are who are astutely uh re like uh, in a position of wishing to reform the church. Now, I think that's a flawed position because I think that the institution of Catho Catholicism is hugely and deeply flawed. But yeah, liberation theology Want to know somebody else who I think is pretty based? I think you all would probably uh, would probably agree is pretty based. Um, uh, Cornell West. Cornell West is a minister. Cornell West is a reverend. And he's one of the most vocal, progressive, socialist activists that we know of. Spiritual. A spiritual man. So, Martin Luther King was another one. Yeah, so, um, how do we defeat dogma? By poking holes in it. Dogma has to be challenged by criticizing it. Dogma has to be challenged by undermining it. And it varies, because dogmas vary. Uh, but we can talk about that more another time. I've talked about this many times, about how really important it is to undermine, critique, and to borrow a word from uh, the Invisible Committee, to destitute dogma. Yeah, it is an ongoing process, by the way. Um, it's an ongoing process, okay? Uh, of, 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 we, dogmatism will always raise up, because here's the reason why. The reason why dogmatism will always be a problem, as far as I, as far as I can imagine into the future, dogmatism will be a problem. And that's because it is an intellectual crutch. Dogmatism provides you with a warm blanket that tells you how to believe and how to engage with the world. That is very easy and convenient for many people, and we must encourage challenging and analyzing our beliefs, even if it's uncomfortable. But dogmatism discourages that, which means that those of us who, who think that dogmatism is a problem, like myself, should challenge dogma. What religions don't have dogmas? Many don't have dogmas. There are many religions that do not have explicit things that you must follow and do. They might have generalized teachings, they might have concepts of the world, but that's not a dogma. A dogma is like an unassailable set of beliefs that you cannot criticize, that are infallible. Buddhism. There are many Buddhist sects. There are Hinduist sects that are like this. There are um, animist beliefs. There are uh, pagan beliefs that are, um, that are very much like this. There are even branches of Christianity and Islam that are like this. But we have a problem, which is that Christianity, specifically Catholic Christianity, and now, thanks to America, evangelical Christianity, are highly hegemonic beliefs. So you encounter a lot of people who have been specifically indoctrinated into the dogma of these beliefs. So yeah. Oh, Reform Judaism. Oh my God. Do you know how many... Uh, do you know how many... Um, not like non-orthodox uh, like um, Jewish synagogues are just incredibly based. They are like there are Jewish synagogues that are ba community bastions that have been kept that have kept knowledge, healthcare, um, community uh, service options, uh, fucking charity going for hundreds of years, and they're non they're non dogmatic. So, yeah. So I, I think that people need to be a little more careful about it. I think that people's um, critiques are... Uh, 
If you believe in a certain religion or philosophy, you believe in its dogma. Well, okay, the the thing is, like, dogma is generally un the unquestionable parts of a religion. And many religions do not have unquestionable portions. Of course, there are some... Um, there are some variations and you could, there are some ways that people use the term differently. But when I talk about dogma, I talk about religions that have unassailable, um, portions that discourage you being critical of your own beliefs. I think that, uh, that good religions allow you to be critical of your beliefs, encourage you to challenge. And they, those do exist. Those absolutely exist.